My name is James Cameron, I'm chairman of the ODI, which is, uh, I think, our leading think tank on development issues. I was a founder of Climate Change Capital, an investment business focused on that issue. I'm also chairman of Agrico, an agricultural development business in uh, East Africa, and uh, I'm on the board of, uh, of Ecoimagination, GE Ecoimagination. I'm interested in how the landscapes concept, the framing of the multiple issues that are contained within the landscapes idea can bring together climate concerns, access to water, productive land, food security, biodiversity, ways in which land can be managed to deliver multiple benefits and, and further the public good in having uh, rich, productive, prosperous, diverse systems. And, and those systems are going to have to be resilient to climate change. So, in a way, climate change is a meta theme. It covers everything. It's part of its problem. It's all about everything. And it needs to be broken up into parts that are manageable. And it needs to be connected to people's ordinary, everyday experience of living. And we haven't always done that very well. Uh, we've often had conversations about the climate that's too remote from human experience, um, too disconnected from a vast majority of human civilization that uh, has either never heard of the problem, probably four in ten people on the planet have never heard of climate change, or can't access the problem via something more immediate. And so it's the job of people who, who know, and politicians, academics, uh, practitioners, business people, to, to find ways of connecting ordinary everyday experience to the climate change issue. And that can happen in, in very precise and individual investment calcula calculations. If I make an investment in this building, I'm doing it for a financial return. Can I make that investment in a way that allows greenhouse gases to be reduced? If I invest in this farm in order to produce this essential good, maybe, maybe rice, uh, can I do that in a way that uh, is resilient to climate change? Can I cope if there's a scarcity of water, for example? Can I do it with sustainable energy? You know, can I do it in a way that actually might increase the capacity of the economy to grow sustainably? These are all the kind of questions that are being asked here that I've spent years working on. Yes, I, I feel as if it's entirely possible to bring the objectives of, of sustainable development and, and economic prosperity together. In fact, I think ultimately they, they will be their own definition. And that ultimately is a critical word because there's a time dimension to this. Uh, a lot of investments are far too short term to be able to connect with long term planning about the, the unfolding of the climate change problem in the landscape. Uh, people on the whole don't have incentives to think that long term. And yet climate change is a fact of life today. It is a present reality. So, so pretending it is a future problem is already uh, miscalculating, making a wrong assessment of risk. And it's also true that many of the kinds of investments that we think will make more productive and more efficient use of resources will produce economic benefits, even without very specific incentives associated with the carbon value or the, or the sustainability uh, value of the investment. So we, we think there's plenty of experience now of how uh, new technologies can be combined in order to produce really, really good economic results for whole economies. For example, the convergence between renewable energy, uh, storage, and demand-side management. Um, we think it's entirely possible to build uh, sustainable agriculture at scale, now that we know a lot more about how the soils can be made more uh, capable of sequestering a carbon more capable of holding more diverse species more productive. So I think many of the calculations that we make about what to do about our, uh, our landscape uh, can now be infused with experience of real investments producing real returns in both private gain and public good. We learned in Tanzania that first of all it's possible to, to acquire quite large tracts of land to produce a staple crop in an environmentally sustainable way using renewable energy, keeping the smallholders on the land so that there is some community development between those that were there before, often those who had no land rights before, but who now can be 
given land to work alongside and now worked with because although they don't have to sell to us, they can and we will collect their, their, their rice and we can mill it and we can dry it and we can market it if they want or we can just pay them for the paddy. All of that provides a more healthy economic system for the smallholder, it produces more value in the region and it's brought in, let's face it, finance, fertiliser and appropriate mechanisation that wouldn't be there but for us. So those synergies are very encouraging. Uh, we've now learned a lot about what you do. And we also learned that there are plenty of things you can't fix on your own. There's still large scale political risk. Uh, there's still poor infrastructure. It's very expensive to do something from scratch. There are no near neighbors who, have, uh, who can fix your vehicles or who, have, uh, who can share knowledge about what happens when your pivot irrigation attracts a, a stem borer disease and you lose your crop. These things um, have to be learnt expensively for the first time. But we are learning them. And, and when we're done, we will have something to pass on or to replicate or to scale up in, in a bigger business.